Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I want to welcome you to um, Work Smarter, Not Harder with our speaker today, Christoph Nauer. Christoph is a native of Zurich, Switzerland, and he is pursuing the American dream. He is a certified time management master. He holds a BA in business and teaching credentials from Switzerland and a master's degree in theological studies. As a founder of Balance 6 Inc., Christoph helps business owners develop systems so they can improve productivity, profits, personal life, and, and their personal life by balancing six, money, health, relationships, time, self-improvement, and higher power or spirituality. His clients dramatically increase their productivity and time off with less stress. I mean, look, look where he is right now. He's having less stress. Um, a, he has a growing list of happy clients who experience a sense of empowerment in both business and life. Christoph lives in San Francisco Bay Area and has been happily married to Kate for over 30 years and they have three adult children. So I'm gonna now turn it over to Christoph and um, uh, but first let you know if you have questions, let's put them in the chat. Thanks everybody and here's Christoph. Well, thank you very much for the introduction Anne, and thank you all and welcome. I'm so glad that you came today and that you are giving me your most valuable commodity, which is time. Uh, Warren Buffett says, I can buy anything in the world I want except time. And how we spend it is really critically important to our own personal well being and our businesses. So, today we're going to talk about you know, proven strategies to double or triple your productivity, profits, and time off. So, again, thank you for, to Anne for inviting me. If you have questions, jump in. I think if in uh, allowed you to talk to me, um, that's fine. Jump in and say, hey, I have a question. Um, the chat, I can't really see, but uh, Anne will you see that and put in the questions for me. If you haven't had a chance so I just, to learn more about I just allowed everybody to talk. So I think you guys can talk. Does somebody want to say something? Hi, Anne and Christoph. There we go. So you guys can just identify yourselves and ask questions um, directly if you'd like, or you can put them in the chat and I will read them off for you. Okay? Sounds perfect. How this works. Excellent. Thank you, Anne. Now, no worries. There's nothing to buy today. There's no hard sale after presentation. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've been to so many presentations that were free. And at the end, there was just this push, 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 buy my stuff and so forth. I, I don't like that, so I don't do it to anybody else. Uh, actually, I actually have a gift for you if you stay till the very end. So if you want to learn more about me, you can, besides what Ann just did, you can go to my website. Um, there's a seven minute video that talks about me and what I do and how I got to where I am today. Um, I'm not going to talk about myself um, because that's a waste of your time. But I do promise you time together today will be invaluable. You'll walk away with a lot of golden nuggets that you can implement right away. So sit back, relax, and close your eyes and imagine having an extra hour or two a day. What would that do for you? Imagine a feeling of accomplishment and satisfaction at the end of the day, knowing that everything critically important that needed to get done, got done. What would that do for you? How would that make you feel? It all starts with clarity. I know that's kind of surprising, isn't it? But it really is, according to my mentor and trainer, Brian Tracy, the most important concept in personal productivity. It's the number one way to get more work done faster. The greater the clarity, the easier it is to complete a task. Brian Tracy says the key principle of life and productivity is that you become what you think about most of the time. And that's why successful people always think about their goals. They're with them. What would it look like? Pick three to five people to spend more quality time with. We live in a consumer society, society that are constantly bombarded with messages about what we need. However, things don't last and are soon forgotten or discarded. Consider instead creating memories with loved ones instead of purchasing gifts. I know that's one of the things my wife and I did. We know we 
took time to take our kids to, on trips to beaches, to playgrounds, to do stuff together. Do you should show those you love how much you appreciate them? If so, how? For instance, your employees. If you're in a committed relationship, do you have a date night regularly? I suggest, you know, ideally once a week. I tell you from personal experience, you know, my wife and I, we were always working full time. And we had three kids, all 20 months apart, as if planned. So it was a hectic life, and we were juggling a lot of balls. Um, and we felt guilty for not being there all day. And then, oh, and now we want to go out and then leave the kids with the babies again. But one day, we just, you know, we just said, we need this. We got it. We need a break. Our kids deserve our you know, good parents. So we did decide and went out, got a babysitter. Guess what? The kids were staying at the top of the driveway with the babysitter while my wife and I were pulling out in the car. And they were chanting. Guess what? They were chanting, party, party. Yeah. They were throwing a party while we were feeling guilty for leaving them with a babysitter. Yeah, there's something wrong with that picture. But anyway, that time off and that time away helped us to connect, to recharge our batteries so that we can be the parents that our kids really deserve. Um, okay. Next, the uh, idea of health. Do you feel refreshed and ready to go when you wake up? Or are you sluggish and tired and would love to hit that snooze button again? Do you make sure you get enough sleep? And, you know, this may sound funny to you, but that's actually something a lot of my clients struggle with. You know, they say, I, I'm so tired in the morning. I said, well, when do you go to bed? Well, usually not till, you know, 1 or one thirty. I says, okay, then I understand. In the ideal case, what time would be best for you? You know, if you could go to bed at what time, what, what would be best for you that you feel refreshed in the morning? You know, then they give me a time, whether that's 11 or 10 or 10.30, whatever it is. Um, and I recommend then, okay, how about you set an alarm on your phone? Uh, so they'll remind you that it's time to get ready for bed. And that's simple and silly maybe but it it can help um okay so if you're not getting enough sleep do something about it so that you wake up in the morning refreshed and ready what's your exercise routine do you have one or are you happy with your weight if not what are you doing about it what's your diet are you eating enough healthy foods these are all questions to ask when you when you set goals in this particular category Higher power of spirituality. What are you doing to nurture the purpose of your life, your spiritual well-being? Are you praying or meditating? If so, how often and when? What kind of person would you like to be? What would you like to be remembered for? What's your legacy? How are you showing gratitude for your blessings and successes? Are you supporting any charities or volunteering your time to make a difference? Self-improvement. There's always something more for us to learn, no matter how old we are. Now, you're here today, so obviously you're doing exactly that. The more you know, the more value you bring to your clients and to your firm. What are you doing to expand your ex expertise? What books are you reading? Courses are you taking? Do you set time regularly for learning new things? If not, I recommend you make time to you know, to block time every week for personal development. So here we go into this, uh, the goal setting category. I'm sure you've heard this before, the SMART goals, right? If not, here's one definition. There's others out there, but this is one I use. SMART stands for specific, measurable, agreed upon, realistic, time bound, okay? So for instance, if somebody wants to lose weight, you know, that's a big thing in our society, okay? Uh, I want to lose weight. Okay. Now, that's not a smart goal because I can go to bed tonight, get up tomorrow morning, and I've lost a few ounces. But that's not really what we're talking about. So here's an example for somebody. So for, for instance, for a woman, I'm going to lose 20 pounds by... August 31st, so I can fit in a smoking hot red dress for my sister's wedding. Boom. All of a sudden, you got a really very, uh, you know, smart goal. Not only that, you also have the why included in it. 
you know, because you it's it's your sister's wedding and you want to wear this incredible dress. The saying goes, and you may have heard that if the why is big enough, the how will happen. Okay. Then you need to develop strategies, you know, and tactics. You can do it yourself. You can he get help doing it. You can get it done for you. Oh, you can not do it at all. Think about what new habits do you need to develop to accomplish these goals? And what old habits and stories that keep you from achieving these goals? They may need to be dropped. So here are seven steps. Again, this is from Brian Tracy's training that we can follow in order to set and achieve goals and really get to where we want to go. Again, the idea of clarity is critically important. Number one, we have to decide exactly what it is we want. Do you know what it is you want? Key is that you have to write down your goals, okay? If you don't, currently don't have that, please do. It, I always say if it's not written, it doesn't exist. Then we talk about setting deadlines for your goals. List every single step you have to take to reach your goals. Organize your list into a plan and take action right away. Now, this is a critically important one because procrastination is huge amongst folks, okay? And, you know, oh, maybe tomorrow or maybe later or maybe, you know, some people like I know when Ann started said, you know, they wanted to um, listen to the recording. I can tell from personal experience, I've said that many times, did I end up listening to the recording? No. <laughs> Why not? Because I didn't put it on my calendar. Or, you know, life got busy, been. life got out of hand again, okay? So it's critically important that we do take action. And if we do want to take action, is you have to put it on our calendar. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. And decide to do something every day towards your goals, okay? Time little baby steps. How does this, what's the saying? How do we eat an elephant? One bite at a time, right? So next, we talk about an action plan. So develop a daily and weekly routine. And like I said before, include self-care in it, okay? It's so critically important. I can tell you from personal experience, once I have a daily routine for my morning to start my day and I stick with it, I'm much more productive. You know, I am, my goal is to be able, always perform at a 10 every day. And if I skip or neglect my morning routine, it usually is not a 10 day, okay? I mean, maybe a seven, maybe a six. So what I do, for instance, you know, I spend about 20, 25 minutes meditating and then I hop on my bike for half an hour and then it's shower time and then I get my coffee, okay? And then I'm ready to tackle the day. So this is how I start my day. I don't know how you start yours, you know, but I highly recommend that you don't wake up and hit the snooze button a couple more times until it's really, you know, you have to rush to get to where you have to go. Um, that's not a way to start the day. You want to be proactive. Whatever works for you, find a morning routine that you can follow on a daily basis. Okay. One of my clients, you know, for her, she has an evening routine that she, in addition to her morning routine, and she says, you know, she calls it her Zen time. So when she gets back from her business, from, her, from running her business, she says, I need at least 30 to 45 minutes of personal time just to myself, you know, her Zen time. And then she can be present to her husband again but she needs to kind of just switch hats from running a business you know being the attorney that she's meant to be that her firm wants her to be to being her husband's wife okay so that you know i highly recommend you do that if you don't currently have anything like that in your plan okay then create a schedule for every day of the week that is critically important. So once your morning routine is done, okay, what does your day look like? You know, what are you doing first? 
the whole idea of time blocking that I mentioned earlier. The way to do that is you can look at prioritizing questions. That, okay, what are your highest value activities? You know, what is it that you are critically important you have to get done? And then make sure that those get done. Here, the next one is what can you and only you do that you've done well will make a difference? That goes to, when we get into the whole prioritizing a little bit later today, uh, but that's critically important. Don't do other people's work. What's the most valuable use of your time right now? Is what you're spending your time on is really the best use of your time. The next part, take control of your schedule is absolutely critically important, okay? Several of my clients, they actually create a schedule. They have a plan, but then they allow others, the clients to derail them. They allow interruptions and other time wasters to interfere. And we talk about time wasters in a little while. That is what that happens here is the disorganization of our clients or the people that we work with shouldn't really allow them to interfere with our organization. Because if we do that, then they derail us, they stop our plan and they, they cause chaos in our lives. So if you have a schedule, stick to it. There's time for you to answer the phone. There's time for you to check emails. There's time for you to work on a, on a project that you've been given by the firm to work on that has certain deadlines. While you're working on that particular project that you have to finish by a certain time, you don't want to do anything else. You, know, you want to have your emails closed off and your phone off so that you can fully focus on that. And we'll talk a little bit more about the importance, the, how critically important that is, that you don't give your uh, schedule over to somebody else. I'm sure you've heard the idea of prioritizing and so forth, right? It's nothing new about that. Um, this is the method that I have here is the one that Brian Tracy recommends. You know, it's very simple and straightforward. There's others out there. This is the one I talk about and I recommend to my clients. A items or tasks that are critically important. They must be done today. A lot of the training that Brian Tracy did is around his book, Eat That Frog. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that book. It's not about a culinary dish. It's about taking on the biggest, most challenging task first and not procrastinating on it. We all do that. I'm included in that, okay? I always say I have a, a master's degree in procrastination. Um, a big challenging task is, is, is exactly that, you know? And so we don't tackle it because we don't feel like, it. oh, why don't we just do something easier? Now, the big challenging task, the frog, is not going away, okay? It's just getting bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier. And what that does to us is it zaps energy and motivation out of us. It really pulls us down. Have, what, have you ever experienced um, this when you got a task that was just weighing on your shoulders, which is hugely uh, challenging and you got it done? How did you feel when you got that done? Like, like a million bucks, right? And that gives you new energy and motivation to tackle the next task. And that's exactly what he's talking about, okay? So A tasks are really important tasks those are the frogs, okay? Those are the frogs you want to eat. Be tasks, they should be done today, you know, but they're never, they're not that important. I mean, not like an A task. The rule is never do a B task before an A task. C, those are nice to be done, but you know, it's okay. They don't really have to be done. D, and that's the one that I recommend to a lot of my clients to put on their computer screen, a little post-it notes that says delegate. What is it that you can delegate? Like I said earlier in the previous slide, never do other people's jobs. Look at the your list of things that you have to get done and only do the things that you can do and everything else you delegate out. I want to illustrate this um, story. You know, this is uh, this particular uh, story is not from an attorney, but it's from a dentist. Um, 
he brought work home daily. He came to me because his wife was so upset with him that she said, you know, you need to stop working at home. You know, I want to see you and my our son wants to see you too. So you either stop doing that or, you know, I might leave you. So he came to, to me distraught. And once you start looking at what happened is that he was micromanaging. He was doing other people's jobs. His office staff should do the work that he brought home. And he always thought, oh, I can do this better and faster. So it took a while for him to let go of that. And so, but eventually he did. And what happened, he had a happy home life and he was able to add 17 new patients to his practice, to his dental practice. So it was a win-win situation. So doing other people's work is, is a waste of time. And I'm currently working with an attorney where that's happening, you know, that somehow the office staff is not performing the way they should and the work gets pushed back and so the, the attorney is kind of forced to do it themselves her, uh, herself which is not good you know you as attorneys you have gone through a lot of schooling to learn the law and become experts at it now there's tasks that you shouldn't be doing that should be done by somebody who does not have your expertise and training and that's critically important that those tasks are delegated to somebody else, okay? Then the E task, those are stuff that you can really actually eliminate, okay? They don't really need to be done. Um, it'd be nice, but it's not really important. Maybe in, a, in the future, they become more important that you wanna get them done. But at this point, they're just clogging your um, to-do list, okay? So there's a way to plan your day, your best possible day. And there's a few questions that I recommend that you ask yourself when you plan your day. And, you know, I recommend that you have the same day and time every year, every week that you set aside to do this. Whether it's the last 30 minutes before you close down for the week on Friday, um, or if you do a Sunday night before you go to bed, it's really totally up to you. But half a set aside 30 minutes or so every week to do that, to plan your next week. And questions to ask or something like, what prospects do I need to call today? What appointments do I have? What appointments do I need to make? What will I do to improve my health today? What meals will I have and where and when? What time will I get up and what time will I go to bed? What phone calls do I need to make? What will I do for my spouse and family? And here it is, what will I delegate? These are all questions to ask. Obviously, you know the things that you have to get done every day. That's critically important. But these are questions that I would encourage you to ask in addition to what it is that you know you have to do, okay? And again, I'd like to illustrate this with a story. Um, most of you have heard of Carl Jung, right? He and I have one thing in common. We're both from Switzerland, actually from Zurich. The difference is he is famous and I'm not. And the other difference is that he had a house at the Lake of Zurich and I did not. So he got contacted by a very influential person who wanted to see him on Wednesday afternoon at two. He said to her, I'm sorry, I cannot keep you that appointment. I can't see you at that time. I already have an appointment. This person was not used to being told no. And so she was not happy. But she happened to be on the lake at two in the afternoon on Wednesday on a boat driving by his house. And lo and behold, she saw Carl sitting in the backyard, dangling his feet in the water. So when she got home, she was irate and he called him up and said, you know, you lied to me. You told me you had an appointment. You did not. I saw you, you were sitting in the backyard dangling your feet in the water. And Carl Jung very gently said to her, no, I did not lie to you. I had an appointment. I had the most important appointment of the week, an appointment with myself. Again, I use this story to illustrate my point. You know, now I would push it a little bit further than what Carl Jung is saying. Uh, I would say you should have an appointment with yourself once a day, not once a week. Um, but it's a good start. If you currently don't do that, uh, once a week is a good place to start. Okay, 
So here are some ways that you can easily double your productivity. If you follow this, these suggestions here, you will, I promise, uh, your productivity will go through the roof. Okay, first we have to list all time commitments, everything in writing, okay? Not in, my, not in your head, in writing. Brian Trace and I are old fashioned, we still use a pen and paper. Um, if you wanna use a Word document on your computer, whatever, that's perfectly fine. Whatever it is, it's up to you. But it has to be in writing because if it's not written down, it doesn't exist. And I can tell you from personal experience, it's happened to me too, you know, regularly. Oh, I didn't write it down. Oh, sure, of course it doesn't happen, okay? Next, I have to prioritize. And again, we can use the ABCD method that I explained earlier. It's up to you, or you can use a different method. There's others out there. You know, this is the one I recommend that I personally use myself. What can you eliminate? And a lot of this stuff that when you look at it, really doesn't need to be on it. And the other one, the big D, what can you delegate? It's just another great story that uh, I think um, a husband asked his attorney wife. He said, what would be the absolute worst thing if you didn't do X? And we do that to ourselves all the time. We think this is so incredibly important that you know, we can't not do it. But ultimately, you know, there's times when it's really not that critical. It's more important to spend some time off, to decompress, to have some quality time with loved ones. You know, this concept of self-care and putting yourself first is a strange one. And the only time we get this correctly in our society is on the airplane. Put your mask on yourself first before you help somebody else, right? So now that uh, things are opening up a little bit, uh, people are traveling again and they're on the airplane. So when you hear that message, apply it to your life too and to your business, not just on the airplane, okay? The other thing too is as a woman, women are born with this taking care of everybody else as mothers, you take, you put yourself last, but that's not going to do anybody any good. It's not going to do yourself any good, your loved ones, your firm, nobody benefits if that's the case. Okay. Once you have prioritized your to-do list, then you need to assign a time to each task. And Murphy's law says it always takes longer. So if you think you can get it done in 30 minutes, you know, maybe allow 45 minutes. If it's a huge and lengthy task, you know, that requires for you to do uh, research. And I'm sure in, in, in your law practice, that's what happens. You know, you're given a job to do, you have to do research and this could be, you know, could be take several days to get this work done. Then you want to junk it down. You know, maybe you spend, you know, two hours or three hours on this particular task and then uh, two or three hours again the next day and so forth. Um, and then it's a matter of putting on your schedule. Once you know I have to work on this particular task for two hours, when am I gonna do that? Let's look at my schedule. Where do I have those two hours to work on this? Then we talked about following your schedule before, like before. Okay, really important that during that time that you have designated to work on this particular task, that's what you do. You don't check emails, you don't answer phones, you don't go on social media, none of this stuff, okay? If you, if you work on something uninterruptedly, you get a lot done, okay? To complete a task is really critical. Get it 80% right and then correct later. It's more important than perfection, okay? Folks who are perfectionists have a hard time with this stuff. They sometimes don't get this stuff done because they think it's not, it's not perfect. It never will be, okay? So get it done as far as you possibly can. And then if necessary, we can be corrected later or, or improved upon or edited. You know, that's usually goes back and forth. And, you know, we submit something to a client and then they, they see something that's not quite perfect. And then you get it back and they work on it and, until it is the way they wanted it. Um, okay. Eat that frog. Okay. So that's again, what I talked about earlier. Don't procrastinate on this. There's a, there's two types of procrastinations and I have an actually a, a podcast on the, those topics. A lot of these topics I have a podcast on that you can access from my website. Um, it's called proactive procrastination 
is good and procrastination is bad. Proactive procrastination is falls into the idea of when you delegate, when you prioritize the things that you can actually, that can wait. That means this is proactive procrastination. You decide what tasks can wait and can be done later. Okay. And that's good. good. That's part. The procrastination that you shouldn't happen is, you know, when you don't tackle the frogs, when you don't eat the frogs. The one thing that will increase your productivity unbelievably is this idea of the 90 15 90 that uh, Brian Tracy teaches. What this means is you work on a project for 90 minutes and nothing else, everything is shut down. You do that so that it has your full concentration, full focus for 90 minutes. Then you take a 15 minute break, you know, get up, move around, stretch, have a cup of coffee, whatever it is you want, and then do it again for 90 minutes. If you just do this once a week, I promise you, your productivity will skyrocket. Now, the key is that during those 90 minutes, you do absolutely nothing else. You work on the particular task that you have to get done. You know, whether it's a, a you know, any, any kind of work that you have to do that your firm assigns to you, okay? And nothing else. Because if you start and stop a task, that, that increases the time to completion by seven times, okay? It is absolutely incre incredible. If you get interrupted, it cannot take you up to seven times longer. Now I know those are not billable hours, okay? So if it takes you, you know, seven times longer to complete a project for your firm because you got interrupted, I'm not sure they let you bill for that, but I don't know how that works, but I would imagine that that doesn't, that can't happen. Or the clients wouldn't be happy with being hit up with uh, that much um, time. Okay. Preparation and implementation. Okay, so here is this is this is another a few other items that can help you with your productivity. Have a clean workspace, make it comfortable. So have what you need on your desk and everything that you don't need for the task, remove it because it can cause distraction and this is not conductive to productivity. One of the reasons why I say that during those 90, 50, 90s, you shut down everything is because even if you just see an email pop in, that split second where, you, where it says you got mail, that's enough to derail you, especially if you work on a task that takes your full focus and concentration. Um, so that's why that's so critically important. And if you have nothing else on your desk that can distract you when you look at the desk, then there again, it helps you to stay focused. Only put one task in front of you, one at a time, and those should be eight tasks. The whole idea of multitasking, I'm sorry, that's a mess and it does not make you more productive. Um, just, that's just the way it is. And I know in our society, this is something that's preached about, but that's, don't believe it, okay? The idea of covering your clock is almost impossible nowadays. Um, so that, that's a thing of the past because you have a clock obviously on your computer. Minimize distractions or eliminate them. That's the best thing. Like I said, you know, phone, no email, no Facebook, close all that while you're at it. Put your phone on airplane mode so that people cannot, you know, they may not call you, but at least you don't hear it ring. Take planned breaks. So we all need breaks. You know, I think nowadays most of us stare at a computer, you know, all day long. So, you know, half a time when you stand up a little bit, if you have one of those desks that you can decide you can either sit or, or stand, that's fantastic. That's actually a good way to get moving a little bit so that you can work um, while standing instead of sitting all the time. We talked about take a lunch break before. Don't sit at your desk eating, go for a walk. Just go outside and enjoy the beautiful weather. Uh, you'll be more productive in the afternoon if you take lunch breaks away from office, okay? This is, again, it's a myth. Those, those uh, lunches and work lunches, no. Now, I'm, you know, I'm saying if, you, if your firm has a, a luncheon in the staff room and you just socialize with others, that, you know, that's a lunch break. But for you to sit at your 
desk and eat while you work is actually not making any more productive. It's also, you're not more productive if you work 12 hours a day instead of eight. That's a myth as well. Your productivity actually goes down if you do that. We all have the same amount of time and we cannot buy more time, okay? How we use it is critically important. And that's what this is all about, the stuff that I'm talking about to you today. Time management is a learned skill. It's not something most of us are born with, but you can study and practice it. And practice makes perfect. My motto is what we learn, we practice, what we practice, we become. Time can have future value. So for instance, you know, today's uh, uh, training is being recorded. So it can be made available to you and others who couldn't be here today so that you could listen to it again, go back and reread or re-listen to what you heard, okay? Now, if, and I don't know whether or not you have to, do, have to train people in your law practice. Uh, if you do, you know, record those trainings so that when the, you don't have to do the same thing over and over and over again. So then when you have the next person that needs to be trained, you can give them the, the training manual, the training recording and audio or video that you created. Yes, it takes time to create that training, but once it's done, you can use it over and over and over again, instead of you using your time one-on-one -on -one with the person, okay? Some activities produce better results than others. You know, that's again, goes back to the prioritizing. Um, what gets you your most ROI? What is it that only you can do and what could be done by somebody else? You may have heard this, what you expect to, what you expect usually tends to happen. So focus on the positive, consistently think about your goals and how to best implement them. What doesn't get scheduled doesn't get done, okay? I mean, we all have these little gadgets nowadays, okay? And I know for me, if it's not in here, it doesn't happen. So I highly recommend you do the same. So here are some of the biggest time wasters that I have come across. So by all means, there might be others, but look at this list and see, you know, which ones apply to you. You can, you can chime in and, you know, and unmute and say, which ones apply to you? And which ones are you promising yourself you will uh, eliminate or try to eliminate? All right, it's so quiet. I guess you guys are all experts at this and none of this is happening in your lives. Okay, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, so, you know, or you maybe, you know, don't want to share what, what is going, which of those apply to you. Either way is fine. But look at those and decide, you know, to do have one or two that you would like to address and eliminate. Because as I said, you know, if you get interrupted, stop a go task is really a huge time waster. And the other thing I talked about the planning and scheduling of your weeks, you know, one minute of planning can save you up to 10 minutes in execution. You can do the math, okay? One minute of planning can save you up to 10 minutes in execution. It's really incredible, okay? All right, so remember, you can get your time and life under control only to the degree to which you discontinue lower value activities. Okay, this is a direct quote from my trainer, Brian Tracy. Write things down, you know, carry a notebook or a recorder, it's up to you. Learn to say no. When Warren Buffett was asked about his incredible success, you know, what he, does he contribute to? He says, well, I just say no to whatever is not critically important to me at this point. Take control of your schedule. Identify bad habits and change them. Delegate and do not other people's work. You know, like I've mentioned earlier, you know, the micromanaging, 
look at the things that you are assigned by your firm and what it is, what is it that only can be done by you and what can be done by somebody else? It's a certain research that could be done by somebody else without your, uh, without your expertise, you know, admin work. What is it that you can delegate and what is it that can only be done by you? This is critically important. Count your blessings, really important. Always focus on the positive, you know, seeing every setback, see an opportunity. Never stop learning. Okay. All right, so what's next? Well, you have a couple of options. You can take this information that you just learned and implement this by yourself alone without any support. You can go back to this recording and, and re-listen to it. And that works for very disciplined, driven and organized people, okay? Or you can work with a group. This is ideal for those who like group interaction and group accountabilities. You know, my groups are usually 10 people or less. Or so people want to work with you one-on-one -on -one, where we just really focus on the things that, that you would like to change. And we can do that anytime that works for people. You know, we, it's your, your schedule. We find that the group, um, the group's currently a meeting at 8.30 on Wednesday mornings. And we usually meet every two weeks. Action changes things. That's what really ACT stands for. And here's another great quote that is from John Maxwell. Most of you have heard of him. Time is more valuable than money because it's irreplaceable. You can always make more money, but you can never make more time. So here is my gift to you for listening to me, for giving you most precious commodity, which is time. So you can decide, you know, if you would like to have a complimentary consultation with me and talk a little bit more about, you know, what's going on, you know, look at uh, where you want to go, what's your ultimate success, and, you know, what is it that you want in your business? What do you want to achieve as an uh, inspiring attorney? We look at some of the challenges that they are facing currently and look at ways that we can overcome those challenges. And at the end, regardless of what to decide, you can either decide to work with me or just say, oh, thanks, it was great talking with you. Um, you will be energized to take action and move forward again. And we also have time for Q&A because I was told we have about an hour, so we have a few minutes um, for Q&A. Uh, oh, I almost forgot I my book, Six Steps to Work, Free, from no time to free time, six steps to work life balance for business owners is now in pre-launch mode on Amazon. So if you would like a copy of that, you can email me and I will send you the link where you can get it. Um, okay, it's all the more about me is on the website. If you want to schedule an appointment with me, you can use my calendar link. That's another one, uh, a time saver. If you don't have a, a scheduling link, I highly recommend you do that. So you don't have to go back and forth and back and forth to schedule an appointment because people can just click on that link and they see when you're available and it puts you in charge of your calendar. Okay. Uh, 